This is Twit. Um, we get, can we talk about the Google Nest ultrasound sensing whenever it's time? Oh yeah. You don't have to tell me about it now. <laughs> yes, let's do it right now, and then we'll take a quick break. Where was where was this one? I know it's in here somewhere. Is it I, in there? I lost track. It's it's in the the change log. Oh, it's down in the oh, change log. That's oh, right. Okay, the well, log. Don't, that's okay. We'll we, talk about it. The no, 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 no. We have a yeah, we've, huge ton of stuff. To yeah, talk about change log change is log. too full, so I'm yeah, moving well, it up. This is, this is good to do. So now. this, I feel so bad, you guys, because I told you there was going to be solely on this particular device, and I had lied to you because it's not solely. It's this ultrasound chip doing similar things. Um, oh. So instead of the cool 60 gigahertz chip, all this is basically doing is using the microphone in the device to be like, whoop, whoop, sound waves, sound waves. And when someone interrupts that pattern, it's like, oh, there's a person here. And then it adapts. And they just, did, like today, the updates started rolling out. My, I always forget what this thing is called. I'm so sorry, you guys. Nest Hub Max. <laughs> <laughs> well, how could you possibly forget? It's only had three names. My Nest Hub or Max is not <laughs> updated to this yet. But- the description of this is so amazing. I cannot wait. I wish I could show it to you now. But it's talking about how the display adapts based on how close I am. So if I ask it the weather and I'm close, it will give me like a lot of granular weather detail. But as I walk farther away, it will just give me like the temperature in big font. And that's so That's neat. Cool. I'm just like, way to use technology to drive a better user experience not just to put cool technology in things. So now it just it. needs to tell you to, to to go outside and walk because it's really nice. See, and once they've bought Fitbit, they can see me getting closer and be like, "Oh, uh-uh, you are not approaching that couch. Walk the other way. <laughs> keep, keep you keep walking. All right, keep going, Stacy. <laughs> keep going." So I was confused. I thought that this was a, a, a they actually had a sonar. Uh, I did rig too, on but this, they but they're actually just using the microphone. That's that's what that's what this story says. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I mean, were you thinking that the Soli was was in there? I, I, well, I didn't so, get that impression. They, I thought it was more like positing. Wouldn't that be neat if? But not that no, I thought was. that they were going to do because they talked about. So they talked about the feature, which is detecting people as it got nearer to things. Yeah. They didn't really talk about how they were going to do it originally, so oh, I, I assumed it was solely because solely was being used for that in the phone, right. and that's a common use for 60 gigahertz ultra wideband sensors. But that's not this use, and it's the same thing the Nest Mini is doing. Remember how we talked about it? Like yep. last was it last week? Yep, yep. To be like, hi, I'm lighting up for you, Here's so you your... can actually see what things you need to press. Yep. So I changed the volume and everything. Yeah, it just, it just makes me wonder what, then. Why is one necessary when the other does the same thing? I, I well, guess, because they do it in different ways. I guess so. so. Yeah. Your phone, your phone shouldn't be constantly emitting an ultrasonic That's noise. That's true. Good point. For I would think a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. um, but it would also be pretty battery intensive. I would also think. I don't know. This is this is me, not sure. Yeah, th th you're probably right. And the way that they built so solely into the phone, it's not that it's necessarily battery friendly, I'm guessing, uh, but maybe it's better than it would be if we went the ultrasonic route. Um, I'm, my jury's still out for me and, and solely on the phone, but we talked about that last week. Um, yeah. I've used it a little bit more and, you know, it's great. My, my alarm, Come I realized this morning. Come back to me morning, in six months. Yeah, 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 totally. It's it's worth checking in and see, like, are you still using it? Any appreciable, like, like improvement to your life? But my alarm no, 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 clock no, no, out. No. So give it time not to use it on your phone, but for other people to develop things that make sense on your phone. This is an ecosystem play. It is, but even Google has said, like, we have no plans uh, right now to uh, do third-party API access for this. Like, eh, it's not in our plans right now. But I guess they say that until suddenly they do. So that's how it all works. All I know is my alarm clock app, Sleep is Android, doesn't support it. And I tried it this morning. I woke up, ooh, I waved my hand over the top, and it did nothing. And so I still have to tap the screen to turn the alarm oh, off. Oh, no. <laughs> Like like a caveman would have oh, to do. Oh, and they, they do say that they tested it with dogs and cats because that is an interesting question. Does it drive your pets nuts? Oh, yeah. And the answer is Google says it doesn't. I can't wait to get it because my dog, I have had devices that drive it nuts. So I'm very curious because that would really suck because my <laughs> dog's already a little neurotic. Yeah. 